Welcome back to the channel. Today we'll be talking about travel backpacks. How you can pick yours and what to look for, what not to look for when picking one. Let's jump in. I actually think picking your backpack is one of the most underrated things when it comes to traveling because it's actually low-key so exciting. So you're gonna be living out of this bag during your travel, so it's really important that you make sure it's comfortable and it's gonna last you. There are two main things that you need to look for when picking your travel bag. Now this video is gonna be specifically aimed at picking your travel bag for clothing and everything. This isn't gonna be camera bag related. I'm gonna do a separate video on how to pick your travel camera bag if you're a photographer. I am a photographer, I took a travel camera bag and a travel bag with me while traveling for six months around Southeast Asia, Australia, and New Zealand. So when I went traveling, I took a camera bag, which is my Wonder Provoke 31 liter, and I took a Mountain Warehouse 30 liter backpack. The one that was purely for my camera kit and my tech being my laptop, my chargers, everything like that. And then that came on airplanes with me in my hand luggage because it was hand luggage size. And then my mountain warehouse, 30 litre, I had all my clothes, uh, toiletries, towels, spare shoes, everything like that. Everything else went in there. Also, if you're interested in what I took traveling, I've done videos on that. So I'll link them down below so you can have a look at what exactly I took both. There's a video on camera kit and there's a video on normal clothes. So this is the bag I took traveling. This is the Mountain Warehouse. I don't think there's anything specific, just the Mountain Warehouse 30 liter bag. And this did the job really well. I call it the torpedo when we're traveling because it was rammed for, like it was almost bursting at the seams, how much I rammed into this. And because of the shape of it, it just looks like a missile, so. I bought something on Koh Samui for 1,100. 30 quid? What did I spend 30 quid on? No. Oh! <laughs> I spent 30 quid on these. This is when I bought my sliders. So yeah, I am... Um... That's a gross story. If you want to know the gross story, I'll put it at the end of the video. Now this was a great bag and it did the job when I was there, but there's a few things I don't like about it, a few things that annoyed me, and a few things that I would just tell you don't, don't get this bag. Don't get a bag like this, and I'll explain why. Okay, so first things first, when you're picking a bag, is the comfort, that's the main thing. Now, these shoulder straps, they've got a bit of padding, but they're not amazing. They're not really comfortable. It, when it's fully loaded on your shoulder, it actually does start to dig in and it starts to hurt. So that's the first thing you need to look for when you're picking your bag, is shoulder straps. Now for me, this wasn't too much of a problem because my camera bag was actually heavier than my clothing bag. So that was what was on my back and I was basically using that as a duffel bag. So it wasn't too big of a deal for me. But when I was using that as just my backpack on my back, after a while, they're not comfy. You need proper padded shoulder straps for your backpack because it's gonna be on your back a lot. When you're moving between airports, going to host hostels, hotels, Airbnbs, wherever you're staying, whenever you're moving location, that's probably gonna be on your back. So you need to make sure you're comfy pads. Side note as well, when I bought this bag, I already knew that I had my Wanda as my dedicated camera kit bag and my dedicated everyday bag. So I wasn't, I just got this because it was like, I think it was like 35 quid in sale in Mountain Warehouse. So I just grabbed it, it did the job. It was like, I feel like it was like a week or two weeks before as well, but I just got it because it did the job. Second point about comfort, this has no hip straps. Again, I used this as a duffel bag, so it wasn't too big of a deal. But if you're having one bag travel, or this is your main backpack while you're traveling, you want hip straps because they take the weight off your shoulders, so it's not all just pulling down your back. It's most of it will then sit on the hip. It's so much more comfortable, and going long periods of time with this on your back it becomes a hell of a lot easier. Especially as well, if you're walking from airport or bus station, train station, boat port, wherever, to your destination, such as your hotel or anything, it gets heavy, it starts, starts to weigh down. So make sure you've got comfortable hip straps for your travels. Third thing wrong with this bag is top loading. Now, as you can see, there's a lot of space in there. So when you ram everything in here, if you then want to get to the bottom, you've got to pull everything out of this bag to get to what's in the bottom of it. And that sounds not that big of a deal, but oh my God, it's so long, it's just, the most long-winded thing. It also, it's harder to pack it when it's top loading. It's basically like playing Tetris, trying to shove everything as far in there as you can go. 
what you want to do is you want to get a suitcase opening. There's loads of different names for these. There's suit, suitcase opening, clamshell, front opening, front loading, whatever you want to call it. But you want a bag that opens up from the front, such as, this is my wandered, which is my camera bag, but it shows the point. You want a bag that opens up so you can get into it and you can access everything, no matter where it is, at any time. You haven't got to dig out and pull everything out to get to it. I can literally get to the bottom of this bag and pull out whatever I want. Or I can go to the top and pull out whatever I want. And I knew this, the things that I knew this, I watched so many YouTube videos, so many tutorials on how to pick your backpack, what not to pick. I knew not to get a top loading. And I still did it because it was cheap. And I was like, ah, it won't be that big of a deal. I won't, I won't even need to get to anything in there unless I'm at the hotel. I'm gonna unload it all so I can get to all my clothes and all my toiletries and stuff. I wouldn't even need to like specifically get to any individual bits. No, ignore that little demon on your shoulder. Get a suitcase opening, clamshell opening, front opening, front loading, whatever you wanna call it. Get one of them bags because it's so much easier, so much easier to pack. Just, I'm passionate about this, I'm passionate. I mean, just don't get, don't get a top loading one. So for your backpack, the size is gonna completely depend on the travels you're doing. So it depends how long you're going for, where you're going, if you're going somewhere with a cold climate, you're obviously going to need bigger, thicker clothing, so you're probably going to need more space to fit all that in. If you're going for an extended period of time, you're probably going to want more clothing, or maybe even less, to say you do it. I went for six months and I took a week's worth of clothes, so it depends on how you want to do it, but... So the size of the bag is going to depend on your travels. Carry-on size is average of 40 litres, so if you want a carry-on bag you don't want to pay for putting your bags in hold, and you don't want to have the extra hassle of having to get to the airport early to check it in, leaving the airport later because you've got to wait for your bag to come out of the hold, everything like that, you want to just chuck it on, get it off and go, which is my preferred method of travel, I have to say. Then go for 40 litre or under. Well, I say under, go for 40 litre. I would not recommend going under 40 litre unless you're doing what I did and you get a separate camera bag which is going to hold off some of the stuff and that's literally just dedicated for your clothes and toiletries. I'd advise going for 40 litre carry-on size so that you have the option to chuck it on. It's also smaller, it's lighter, and it also means that because you haven't got loads and loads of space to fill up, you tend to be more conservative with what you are buying. If you do buy some stuff, so I bought a few t-shirts out there, you throw a few t-shirts away. It keeps you lightweight. If you are looking for something bigger, if you're going for a bit longer, I would advise probably going, wouldn't go any, any bigger than 60 litre, probably wouldn't want to go past 50 litre. There's a really good mountain warehouse bag that I'll link below, which is a 60 litre. Comes with an attachable day bag as well. So the day bag is a 20 litre which comes off. Wait, is it 60 litre? I think it was a 60 litre plus. Yes, yeah, so I'll link this down below. It's a 60 litre traveller bag with a 20 litre detachable day bag. And the 20 litre one, obviously you can put in what you want to take on the plane, you can take it on the plane, and you chuck in your 60 litre underneath. That is loads of room. Almost too much room, in my opinion. But the good thing about this bag, and I would, I wish I'd got this. Ah, uh, do I wish I'd got it? Don't know if I'd say I wish I got it, but if I, okay, if I wasn't a photographer, I would get this bag because it's affordable and it's great. But I am a photographer, so I have a dedicated camera bag, and the camera bag is not going in hold. I will fight to the death on that. It's not going in hold. I have had arguments with flight attendants because they wanted me to put my camera bag in hold. It's not going in hold not going in hold. But yeah, so 60 litre, plenty of space, loads of room. If you're someone that needs to take more stuff or if you're going to a colder environment, or maybe if you're even a couple, you could probably fit two people's worth of stuff into this bag. But also if you don't, it's got zips and straps so you can squash it down so that you don't have to use 60 litre, you can squish it down to however much is being used. And then you've got that extra space if you want it. So, but that's the absolute max I would go to is 60 litre bag. Probably, personally, wouldn't want to go over 50. I was fine with 30, though, as I say, it was tight, but it's because I had my camera bag as well. I would probably go for 40 litre. In fact, next time I go traveling, I'll probably get a 40 litre, 35, 40 litre clamshell opening bag. I need to pick a name for that because I keep swapping between all of them. Clamshell opening bag as my clothing and toiletry stuff. And obviously I have my dedicated camera bag, which will probably still be the Wandered because this thing is amazing. I've had this for two and a half years, I think. Amazing, I love this bag, still going strong, fantastic. 
So yeah, so it depends on your trip, it depends on the size, but I would personally advise 40 to 50 litre bags. Okay, a couple of other little points here. Make sure your bag has uh, zip locks, or has the ability to hook a lock through the zip, because thieves. You go and traveling, worldwide, theft is a problem, it's a issue, it's something that happens. So you just wanna make sure you're locking up your bags, especially when they're not in your sight, because you're putting them on a plane, coming off of hold luggage, whatever, you wanna make sure they're locked up. Also your carry-on bags, I'd advise lock up as well, obviously that being my camera bag, that was had a padlock on it pretty much all times. So make sure, you, make sure the bag you get does have the ability to put padlocks onto the zips, and make sure you get some padlocks. On the note of padlocks, don't buy cheap padlocks because I've bought cheap padlocks and they they literally, they locked and they never unlocked. I had to break them off my bag and they were so easy to break off, it was disgusting. So get some proper TSA approved padlocks. Definitely. Another little point is get one with a rain cover. Well, another little point is either get a bag with a rain cover or get one that is rain or weather resistant. So this one, one of the good things, I do have good things to say about Stuff just fell out the bottom of the bag. So if you've ever been, this is so random, if you've ever been to Thailand and you have been to 7-Eleven, you'll recognize these things. You can collect them and then you can trade them in for, was it money I think you could trade them in for? I think you got like, you got some money if you traded this in or something. That is, hey, that's an Australian five cent. And that is the Wi-Fi password to a hostel somewhere with a piece of chewing gum in it. Sick. As I was saying, this is a rain cover. If you go into Asia and it rains, it rains a lot. Rain cover. Okay, something else that this bag does have, see I do have good things to say about this bag, is a chest strap. These things literally just go across your chest, they go attach the shi to the shoulder pads, zip them up, and then that also takes some more of the weight off your shoulders, it stops you pulling your shoulders completely back. Um, it just makes it, a bit, when it's loaded up, it makes it a bit more comfortable, and then that combined with the hip straps. Oh, I've just realized this has, okay, so look at this. This has hip straps. The hip straps are literally just straps like there is not there's not a single bit of padding on this don't get hip straps like this get hip straps with padding because otherwise they're just gonna hurt like i never use that ever i'm really slating this bag but it did the job short stay melbourne london gawick from dubai 3rd of february 2018 Oh, oh! What's this? Hotel 21 was Rome. I didn't even take this bag with me. Oh, yes. See, I'm not going to show you this because it's got my phone number on it. But I put this is another little little bit of advice that I'd little nugget nugget of knowledge. I put a um, write down your contact details put them somewhere in the bag that isn't locked up. So if the bag goes missing and someone goes through it trying to find contact details, boom. I don't know if I just showed you my number, boom. And then they can call you, hopefully, if they're a good human being. Okay, that's it from this video. That's how you can pick your travel backpack. I hope you found it interesting. I hope you found it helpful. If you did find it either of those things, drop a thumbs up down below, massively help me out. It will also push this to more people that are hoping to go traveling. Give them a hand, all that good stuff. I've also realized, if you've at all seen the, the scratch on my arm, it's the dog. I was playing with the dog this morning and <laughs> gashed me open. If you like the video, consider subscribing down below. All the other stuff that YouTube is having to do. I'll see you next video. Don't forget to hit the shot. Peace. And if you're considering going traveling, have fun. So the gross story is that I was wearing, I took a pair of sliders with me. And I was wearing them every single day because I spent the first three months of the trip in Asia. So it was hot, sweaty. I wore them in the water, I wore them in the sea. I wore, they were just, they went, they got abused. And they were pink sliders and they were, they'd gone pink, orange from just sweat and minerals of life over the three months of Asia. 
um, to the point where they absolutely stunk. I tried washing them multiple times, but these things stunk out the room. I had to leave them outside, like on balconies or outside the room or something, or in, wrapped up in a plastic bag. They wouldn't. They didn't go in my backpack unless they were like wrapped up in a plastic bag because they smelt so bad. So in Koh Samui, I bought some. Well, I bought them Nike sliders and. They are amazing. They don't hold smell. They're just, they're the most comfy sliders I've ever worn in my entire life. Still wear them to this day, which is why they're so easily accessible because they're on my shoe rack. They're great. Yeah. 30 quid. Probably the biggest expense out there for like purchasing something for myself. In fact, no, it was. I remember arguing with myself because I didn't want to buy them. So I was like, I don't need to spend 30 quid. I've got sliders. But then, because I was in the travel mindset, but then I was just like, you need new sliders. They are comfy as hell. And they're on sale as well, I think. Pretty sure these were on sale. But yeah, that, that's my gross story.